I have the Houdini of recording cameras. There's, it's a, it's pulling a new trick every day. I'd like to go down and, and meet the people at GoPro. I think I would just start, I don't know, throwing uh, suplexes out on them. Jump off the top of ropes, elbow drop. I got news for you right now. You ever been to the top of the top ropes? I haven't. But just by judging by it, I mean, I stand on top of my kitchen table. I ain't jumping elbow first onto anybody. Guy, that's the beauty of watching football now. When, you, when you're old, you realize how stupid this game is. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You say, oh my God, these guys are destroying their bodies. And you almost sit there and chuckle. It's like, I'm going to be in better shape at my age than they're going to be at my age. These guys are going to be shot. You have no idea. Come on. Give me the Lord's break. Can I have some coffee, please? Oh, it pours today. Wow. I, I wish I had a handful of, of confetti for you, buddy. I trying to spend more time with my son. The other day we put I put on Star Wars. He's at that age now where he can understand things. Like things evolve with children. It's like you can't do anything with them when they're three. You know, even though we did watch uh, Rambo: First Blood when he was like six months. That's somewhere in the back. That's somewhere down in the brainstem. You understand? Yeah, I know. What a horror! This was like, I don't know, the, the Manchurian experiment. What was that? Yeah. I was like, ah, he doesn't know what's going on. He's a couple months old. He doesn't know what's going on. He's sitting there looking at the TV like this. Um, 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 um. <laughs> I don't know. It's like Christmas. I don't really don't think kids should get Christmas like the first three years. They don't know what that, like Christmas gifts. Come on. Save the money. You're like, hey, Merry Christmas. Here's a here's a ball of tinfoil. They're like, hey, hey, hey. Here's the wrapping paper. Unwrap. Just a sheet of it. Go to town. <laughs> Best Christmas ever. Better than the Christmases I have now. Anyhow. I put on Star Wars. You understand? And it gets to one of these scenes where this fucking asshole. What's his name? Lucas? George Lucas? This fucking... Like, great head of hair asshole. Have you ever seen a better head of hair than George Lucas? It pisses me off. He's got a hairline that comes down to, like, his eyebrows. How is that even possible at his age? I I tell you what, I'm not even gay. I want to run my, my, my hands through his hair. Anyway, it, it has those scenes that he put in, that he CGI'd in. Oh, my God, way to destroy a killer movie. I was like, what the fuck is this? The whole reason why I'm watching Star Wars is to get away from this bullshit. Jabba the Hutt comes out. He's like, hey, uh, I'm on a green screen. How are you today? I'm like, this is taking me out of the movie. And I'm realizing how ridiculous everything is right now. I mean, what was Jabba the Hutt's cholesterol? That's what I want to know. F blood pressure? Anything? Can we get an EKG on this fucking slug? What was he, for God's sake? I want answers. And how did he become so powerful? Come on. I'd kick him right in the dick, but I don't know where it is. That's what I want to see, a porno with Jabba the Hutt. Can we make this happen? You want to you wanna do CGI, George? Huh? You got nothing better to do? Give me the job of the hot porno. Can we, can we have a Star Wars porno? Come on. You break. <sighs> Princess Leia was hot in that slave outfit. Do you guys realize that slave outfit was like serious business? I'm here to tell you. My crime law. 
Anyhow, we watched all of us together. Uh, I mean, these delete these scenes came on. I felt like shutting the movie off. I really did. It just completely took me out. That's all. I mean, that that's all. And then we had a, a bowl of cereal together. Yeah, the wife was out. I had a bowl of Apple Jacks. Oh my God, I'm coming. I I just had a discussion with this guy at work about breakfast cereals. It cut. I I talked. Do you ever? I talk, been talking to this guy for a while. All of a sudden, I find out he's like a, a breakfast cereal aficionado. I'm like, how? What? He's like, yeah. He wants to go like to these restaurants where they just serve cereal. I mean, what are they? What what are they? Bring me, bring me Count Chocula, 1984. The guy comes out. Oh, oh, you know, he presents it to you. This is Count Chocula, 1984, advertised. On Saturday morning cartoons. Yes. All right. Can you put down the fucking... I don't know. He pulls out the scissors that are like silver. It's always a presentation. It's like when they bring out meat and the guy's got to come out and cut it in front of you. I cut it in the back. All right. I don't want to see... I don't want to see that you got all dressed up to cut up a steak. This is your job in life. I said, if this guy's not an alcoholic, shame on him. Every time he comes out, I want to say, please just tell me you live with your parents. Please. Okay? And nobody takes cut steak seriously. It's like, just get it the fuck out of here. I want to eat it. Okay? I don't need Cirque du Soleil before I eat my dinner. Don't prepare food in front of me. I don't care. I want the end result. I, I love these guys. You, you go there, they're throwing meat at your face. You ever go to these? one of these things? What is it? Benny Hanna? They're making the heart out of the egg. Like, just just get lost. Buzz off, will you? Get me a drink. And a fucking foot job under the table. How come I never had a girl that did that? You see it in the movies all the time. Like, you know how the girl puts the foot up the leg? Oh my god, raging hot on. Bang, ring, raging hot on. Bang, ring, raging hot on. Are you guys like, I don't know, have you had enough? I encourage you to, I don't know, go watch a guy. I'm watching a guy who's going sailing across the world. And he's videotaping it. This is great. This is great. I'm talking about masturbation on the front deck at night who's gonna see you i mean if you're by yourself right it's like hey, i'm going up on deck to masturbate there's no you think there's nobody around you like Ooga! Ooga! and then next thing you know like an oil tanker comes out of the fog and everybody's on deck they're like oh my god he's jerking off guys record him they're recording you it's going up on fucking i don't know TikTok. you're sitting there Ooga! and you hear Ooga! <laughs> the the foghorn and the fart noise are the official what are the, what I do to my wife when she asks me to do something. I either go <laughs> That's my way of like dominating. So you have to do the dishes. I just go <laughs> and try to make it as disgusting as possible. I know I, th you turn into a three year old boy. I'm a grown man. It's either that or I go. So I don't know. Take that. I don't know what that means, but it means fuck you in not so many words. Am I wrong? Listen, Andre the Giant was world famous for it. As soon as he'd enter the room, he'd blast one out. It'd be like. Can you imagine what Andre, the, what Andre the Giant farts in your presence? I mean, you have stories for the rest of your life. Yeah. If I'm at a bar and I start speaking like, you know, I was there when Andre the Giant fought it. All of a sudden, the whole bar crowds around you. It's like, oh my God, what did it smell like? What was the volume? Did you measure it in cc's? I don't know. But I want to know about it. I got news to see it right now. It would pull me right away from Facebook Marketplace. 
Oh my God, I'm looking for everything on Facebook Marketplace. What a treasure this place is. Ah. What the fuck were we talking about? Breakfast cereals. I got to tell you right now. So me and him, we go, we're off to the races talking about breakfast cereals. And he, he said something to me that really flipped my lid. Remember when you would fight with your brothers and sisters to, to see who's going to read the back of the cereal box? Oh my God, that was the thing to do. You have no idea the kind of fighting brothers and sisters do. Or maybe you do, because maybe you have brothers and sisters. This was no end. We, we had, listen, guys, it was Count Chocula, Captain Crunch, Golden Grams. Oh my God. You know what I never had? I never had the really shit, shit cereal that I wanted. It was like, remember you'd have, you'd have uh, Count Chocula, then you'd have Frankenberry, okay? But remember the rare oddity when you would go over somebody's house and they had Booberry? You never saw it anywhere. What were the production numbers on Booberry? That's what I want to know. And you would see it in the supermarket, you know, like, ask for the Booberry, but it's like, even mom had a consciousness at that point. I mean, it's bad enough that the, 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 the fucking cereal is like a sugar bomb from hell. But now I'm going to buy in the blue box. You just didn't have a blue box of cereal, even though you had Rice Krispies and Frosted Flakes, but hey, I guess... I don't know what the fuck I'm talking about. Anyhow, it was just like, it just screamed out, this is garbage from hell. So, never had booberry. Like, my mother would never buy us tricks either. I always wanted tricks. I never even tasted tricks. That was a, like the real garbage. It was like, it looked like cotton candy on the box. Like, moms aren't going to buy that. But the, she'll buy Count Chocula. Which, which looks like a stoned Count Dracula on the cover. Did you ever see? I, I don't know. It, it, it's it's like Count Chocula gets progressively more stoned looking. I don't know if you've seen this through the years. I don't know. They got. I, I could just picture Count Chocula hanging out with a uh, fucking. What's his name? Gargamel. Like a dinner party. All those fucking scumbags could be there. You know? Who are some of the other cartoon scumbags? I don't know. Maybe it's fucking... Uh... Yosemite Sam is there. He comes in, guns blazing. You're like, yo, buddy, come on. We just did the fucking drywall in here. Can you fucking knock it off? So, I mean, yeah. Cereal... I got news for you right now. We had a set of rules in our house. You couldn't take the prize out until the cereal was empty. You're like, what the fuck? Are you kidding me? Why don't you just put me on the rack while we're here and hit my dick with a ball peen hammer? Are you kidding? You don't understand. The only thing going on was the prize in that cereal box. There was nothing else going on. I could go outside and ride my fucking bike, but we didn't have Amazon Prime or the internet. We didn't have Pano at your beck and call. So it was like the prize in the fucking cereal box was actually goddamn important. And I remember the prizes. I, I had the I had the Captain Crunch fucking uh, microscope. Do you remember that one? Oh my God, you put it together. I don't know. You put one of your dick hairs under there and you look at it. It did absolutely zero magnification. That's what is this lump of shit? I feel like busting into the Moderna right now. I got the new vaccine. Hold on. Get me a blood vial. Everybody sits around. You know, like, oh, what does he got? If you'd make it past security, I don't know. With a fucking Captain Crunch uh, microscope in your hand. You pull out the, mac the, the fucking Captain Crunch microscope. And they all just like, I don't know, go on lunch break. And then you look at the blood sample and actually find a real vaccine. How about that? That's how Mickey Mouse this world is. What do you want me to tell you? And then, yeah, so we, we yeah, I think it was not until the prize was visible. Because remember what would happen if you'd reach your hand down into the cereal to get the prize with your disgusting, nose-picking, sneezed-on hands? 
you'd go down into the bottom of the box and then the box would get blown up like a balloon and then mom would know you were fishing around for the prize. So you were fucked. And it wasn't only until years later when I learned to shake the box up to get the box back into form again. I said, Jesus Christ, where, where were you, sweet mystery of life, when I needed you? Anyhow. And the other rule was, uh, oh, and we used to fight over the fucking box to read the back of the box. Because some, you know, listen, I, we had these cereals. I, they had maps on the back. There were treasure hunts. So you fought over who was going to look at the back of the box. And I would always end up with the back of, like, the shredded wheat box. Yeah, thanks, Dad. Thanks. My father used to eat shredded wheat without the frosting. I mean, what, the, what are you, an animal from hell? And grape nuts. Who on the fucking living planet Earth eats grape nuts? My old man. Yeah. What's the matter? You couldn't put ball bearings in the box? At this point? My father eating grape nuts, shredded wheat, and carnation instant breakfast. Carnation instant breakfast was one was what like just after like they put the astronauts on the moon. Say, hey, right, say? We got this powder in a sack. It's, uh, I don't know. It's the 1960s, 70s. I, well, I don't know why I'm talking like a guy from the 20s. Powder in a sack. Protein. Just like the astronauts use. I mean, it was Tang and Carnation Instant Breakfast. Actually had a foothold in a, in a food market somehow, some way. Imagine buying fucking Carnation Instant Breakfast now. Sorry, it doesn't have 98 grams of protein in it. And completely sh gum up your shit passages in the process. Carnation Instant Breakfast was like, wow, four grams of protein. Super healthy for you. Anyhow, yeah, you look at the back of the box, eat the cereal. What are you going to do? And there, there, there were cereals like Ice Cream Jones, remember? No, Ice Cream Cone Cereal. You don't know the fucking... The, the, we used to see the commercial on TV and go nuts. We'd be doing the wave... Like we're at Shea Stadium in the living room. My name's Ice Cream Jones. ding a ling a ling bring in the world my ice cream cones. You don't remember that one? The fuck is wrong with you, huh? Huh? Come on. These are all-time classics. You had, uh, uh Frosted Flakes. whoop de doo You had the standards. You know, like, you, you open up, who ate cornflakes? I want to know who eats cornflakes. This is a popular breakfast cereal. Who eats cornflakes? Oh, my God. I would have to put the sugar on with a snow shovel to eat cornflakes. That like, that was the thing. When you ran out of sugary cereal and then your mom made you eat Rice, rice Krispies, you're like, this sucks. The other day I was eating, I don't know what the fuck. Something covered, honeycombs. I was eating honeycombs and honey nut Cheerios. Forget regular Cheerios, honey nut Cheerios. But fantastic, fantastic. And and like I said, the toys. I mean, I had them all, the little maps, the little, the little games. I had a whole box of them for a while that I didn't even open. I kept that box for like 20 years too. I think I finally threw it out. I'm like, what am I doing with this? It's ridiculous. There was like a magic eight ball in there. Who remembers what cereal gave a magic eight ball? Oh, the other thing was Lucky Charms. Remember when they added a new charm? Remember when they add purple rainbows? What, no, what were they, purple, purple balloons? Remember that? That was like an event. I think we got the day off from school back in the 80s when that happened. I can, because it was always Lucky Charms, Le Leprechaun would come on, you know, Blue Diamonds, Green green Horseshoes, fucking, I don't know, Orange Molotov Cocktail Bombs. And, and he comes on and he's like, purple balloons, he might as well have been saying it in slow motion, we were like, son of a bitch, I, we can't believe it, another fucking marshmallow. My God, my most exciting day ever of my life. Where they announced the purple, and then, and now it's like a, a new mushroom every, uh, a new marshmallow every fucking month. They got rainbows in there. I don't know. Double dongs. 
I know, guys. Listen, we're scraping the bottom of the barrel here. All right? So, I don't, I don't know. Call your mother, for Christ's sake. When's the last time you talked to your mother? I forgot my mother's birthday. Eesh. Oh, by like two days. You have no idea. I went to, uh, when I finally realized, I actually got an anonymous phone call from my father. This is how I knew it was bad. I get a phone call. I actually pick it up. I don't know why I picked it up. I never pick it up. I pick, this is, this is like a double whammy. I pick up the phone and it says, your mother's birthday, click. And it was like, I got like a shock of lightning down my spine. It was like, it was a double whammy. It was like my father made a phone call. I think the last phone call he made was in 79. So that's number one. That was the shock. And then I forgot my mother's birthday by like two days. And I was like, ah, shit. Anyway, I went over there. I bought the flowers, you know, that the whole, I turned it on. You understand? I go over there, two handfuls of confetti in the air. I said, my, you'll clean that up later. I don't have time for this. You understand? I love visiting my parents. It's one of my favorite things to do. I go there, I pet the dog. You understand? Give my father a handshake. Me and my father talk shit for a while. What are you going to do? I like talking shit with my father. Yeah, we talk about everything. Cars, houses, mechanical things. Dip, dap, do. Tools. What do you want to talk about? Let's talk about the dogs. Bap, bap. I know you're sleeping. I, I'm, I'm sorry. Back to breakfast cereal. <laughs> and then you had like all like movie cereals and stuff like that. Pac-Man cereal. Remember when Pac-Man cereal came out? Got had to have it. It was horrible. There was like no marshmallows or anything. It was like extruded rice or something like that. Pac-Man cereal was the biggest letdown. I know. I know. And then the other day, I, I put on the Beijing Olympics. I, 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 I can't watch Olympics from Beijing. Okay? I'm here to tell you. I can't do it. They're putting these athletes in quarantine. I said, if I'm an athlete, you don't understand. These athletes have to train, like, nonstop. If they would have put me in a fucking 10-day quarantine... Right before the Olympics, I've been training for this cocksucker for the last four years. No, my entire life. I, I hate to tell you. I've been training for this moment. Now I'm in quarantine. You know what I would do? I'd call the front desk. I'd say, bring up, I don't know, three bottles of fucking Jack Daniels and two bottles of Grey Goose. Because this is going to be a, ten, a fucking ten days you're never going to forget. And that's just for tonight. I'd step out onto the fucking, I don't know. The figure skating ring looking like Elvis late 70s was he even still fucking alive the gut would be hanging out I'd be wearing my figure skater outfit which would just be uh, body colored do you understand and for me that would be like a, a fucking tomato red for how drunk I am so I'd look like I'm completely nude and I don't know I put a fucking cucumber in my fucking my onesie. What does a what does a guy wear? I love this figure skaters. I put a cucumber down there so it looked like I have a, I don't know a a dick like a goddamn fucking can of bondo. <laughs> it's right there. Hey, listen. That's it. And everybody's appalled. And I come out there, maybe I fall down on purpose. I don't know. I, I do one of those triple lutzes that goes right down into a, I don't know, a tumble salt. A tumble salt. I, I told my, my son used to say that. Dad, I did a tumble salt. I said, oh, you did a tumble salt, huh? Some assault, son, but do you think I'd correct them? Absolutely not. Just like uh, I won't correct my wife when she says potential instead of potential. Hey, this person has a lot of potential. And I'm like, Pfft. yeah, I know. 
It's the greatest thing ever. And my nose running. That, that too. That's right. Now I have shiny hands. You ever talk to, I've been talking to people lately and I have the drip of mucus coming out of my nose. Like it's hanging there. And it's like, what do you do? Do you go for the wipe? That's even more disgusting. It's like, excuse me, excuse me. I'm going to put this hanging drip of mucus all over my hand and then continue talking to you. And then, hey, why don't we finish with a handshake? See you later. Nice to talk to you. How about that? Or do you just let it drip out and you stare into their eyes to see if they you got to watch the drip fall? You do one of those. You're like, oh, my God, this disgusting piece of shit has mucus dripping out of his nose and boom, oh, there it goes. Uh, what were you saying? Oh, yeah, the Mets, they're doing great. Uh, uh, oh, there's a puddle of mucus on the floor. Disgusting animal from hell! <laughs> I mean, what are you gonna... My nose drips on it. Yeah, so sometimes I wipe it and it's like, my, then my hand is shiny. I lo it looks like somebody armor rolled my hand. Yeah, no, no problem. What's that? What's that? Oh, uh, they're playing, they're complaining uh, by the airport because of the glare coming off the, the top of your hand. <clears throat> you think you can uh, maybe wipe the mucus off? <laughs> Tower 2? Coming in? Guys, I don't know. Look at Callahan here. <laughs> Reporting for duty. Okay, okay. And what are they not? Just like that, we're scanning for crimes. I get Javiel come. Uh, Javiel comes over my house the other day. And what he likes to do is he likes to like drop off his daughter and then all of a sudden do uh who's the fucking magician? He's like David Blaine, then all of a sudden disappears from the house. I'm like, how what? Oh I just I just got incurred with uh I got commandeered for for babysitter duties. I'm like this this guy is living the life. I got news for you right now. If I come back in the afterlife, I wanna be happy out. I love this. So uh, next thing you know, he shows up again. Now my wife is home. We're having coffee on the couch. He comes and sits on the couch, but it's not a sit. It's a splay. Like he splays himself on the couch with his legs hanging off like this. You never saw anybody so comfortable in your life. Like hands behind the head. And he starts making fun of my haircut and telling me I need a haircut. And my wife is translating this to me. I said, why don't you tell him in, in, I don't, I'm talking. What, can you translate this to have yell for me, please? Get the fuck out of my house. How about that on size? He's making fun of my, my hair. And what was the other thing he was talking shit about? He's like talking shit about me. Oh, because I, I, I was playing video games. I was playing Dead Cells. He said, games are for little boys. Games are for little boys. Games are for little boys. Games are for little boys over and over again. And I'm like, okay, and? What, like, who does, who comes into another person's house doing this? And I'm trying to explain to him, like, they're not for little boys, but he's, he's just laughing at me. I don't know, maybe the awful little boys. What are you gonna do? I tell you what, I can't I can't get any peace and quiet in my house. I was watching I was watching a documentary on 
how 1980s like baby boomers felt about the 1960s. This is very, very interesting because, you know, naturally I wasn't there. So I don't know what was going on here. So in, in the 50s, they started showing these reels of these 1950s films where it like basically told you how to be a human being. And it was like, when dad comes home, and it's like, the, like leave it to Beaver. When dad comes home, try not to, try not to uh, talk about anything negative. I'm like, Jesus Christ. Are you fucking serious? Where are these films? Bring them back and play them on prime time. Like, try not to bother dad too much. He's had a long day. And I'm like, yeah, yeah. And then the wife comes over. Have some, have a, be, greet your man with a smile. And uh, tell him about, or, or, or don't talk too much. It basically said, shut your fucking trap. I said, amen, I'm yelling amen, I'm yelling amen. And they're telling me this is what people from the 60s were rebelling against, the hippies. I'm like, mother fuck these hippies. To fucking hell with them. I almost can't, can't watch Woodstock anymore. They ruined everything. God almighty. That was the other thing was like, have dinner ready for dad. I'm like, yeah. Yeah, the dog's bringing over the slippers. Do you understand? I come home, my dog is ripping my slippers to shreds. My God in Christ. And the kids were supposed to be heard, uh, seen, not heard. Like the kids had no say in anything at all. They didn't, they didn't dictate anything. Their whole job, everybody's job was to please dad. Now, I, you want to know what it's like to, be, to ha have a family now? Let me build a machine that constantly kicks you in the balls. That's right. It has like feet that spin around. And it's just like, it's just like whack, 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 nonstop. Until your balls are coming out of your nostrils. Do you understand? That's what it's like being in a family now, in this atmosphere we're in. With, the, with these fucking Yahoo losers. Today's man video would be me sleeping on the couch and all of a sudden waking up in horror as I hear my, my wife's engine for her car pull up from work and I run in and I start like cleaning the dishes. Gotta tidy up the place before she sees because I have, I don't have an existable nut bag. That's right. This is pathetic. Pathetic. The women should be home, it, at home, at home. You understand guys, you gave it all away. And there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with that. Trust me, trust me. There are some women out there that are like, yeah, I should be fucking home. There's some actual smart women out there. Like, God damn it, yeah, get me back home. I've had it already. Let me tell you something, I watch, my, I. I I get it, women. I, I I was with my kid the whole day, the other day, and I don't know. I was looking for, I was looking for that sled in Running Man to take me the fuck out of that house. That's what I wanted. I want one of those sleds installed. So when my wife comes home, I can just hop in and I don't know, fly into the actual Running Man arena and fight people. That's how I feel at the end of the day. So then it's, yeah, all the 60s kids were rebelling against that. They're like, you weren't supposed to tell anybody your problems. You weren't supposed to, uh, like, complain. You were kind of, like, supposed to suck it up back in the 50s. And I'm like, this is wonderful philosophies. And I thought you was taught to respect authority. And, like, not ask questions. I'm in! I'm in! I'm in. Yeah, guys, I mean, I, I I don't know if I tell you that I'm, I'm having a real problem with uh, 
peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. I think I'm addicted to peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. I have news for you right now. I went to the fucking store. Because at first I had this like jar of, of smokers. And uh, I look at the ingredients. It's all high fructose corn syrup. I'm like, eh, eh. That's the one thing. I, listen, I, I eat garbage. But I, I tell you right now, I have some like sort of conscious. I mean, I'm not eating for high fructose corn syrup. I go, I, I said, let me get some real, you know, j jam. J j I, I, this is the thing. I go to the, to the guy. I didn't even know to say jelly. And he's like a Spanish guy, like right off the boat. I'm, I'm like, excuse me, do you know where you keep the preserves? And he's looking at me like, ha, huh, wah, 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 wah. And I'm like, yes, the, uh, the jams and jellies. I mean, where the fuck is the peanut butter? I like, just show me where the peanut butter is. That way I could like assume it's right next door. Cause if it's not, then this fucking supermarket is from hell. In not so many words. So I go over there and they got like, I love it. They got like 10 rows of fucking smuckers. Like, all right, we get, we get that you got a foothold in the market here. Okay. And every last damn one of them is full of high fructose corn syrup. So I'm like, all right, they can suck my dick. I go down and I find like, by the way, somebody sent me some jam. Somebody sent me some fucking jelly. And it was out of this goddamn world. I wish I could re uh, remember the name. Who sent it? They sent me homemade. I don't know what the fuck this shit was. It was dynamite. I, f I finished it in, I don't know, a few days. Anyhow, I look down and I see like this raspberry jelly. I'm like, ah, raspberry. I'm like, ah, raspberries. I pick up the jar, I turn it around, I see cane sugar. I'm zinging it out at the register. I go home. I make a, the biggest, fattest peanut butter and fucking raspberry jam sandwich you've ever seen in your life. It was like eating a peanut butter linza tart. Oh my God. I couldn't believe it. It was so delicious. I said, oh my God. Like, I, these are the little joys you have in your life. Like smoking a cigarette and a peanut butter sandwich. I mean, can somebody kill me? Please kill me. Guys, what are we here for today? I'll tell you right now. There goes Rita. Thank you, Rita. Guys, the one of my biggest regrets, okay? We had a gift, two amazing gifts from Rico. Rico, you know, is our friend in, in, in Puerto Rico. So, I mean... Yes. Rico, uh, when he's not out stealing hubcaps, that's right, and hitting people with sticks, because that's what Puerto Ricans do. Uh -uh. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> I always have this rift with Puerto Rican people. I love, let me start by saying I love Puerto Rican people to death. Number one, they have a different style than any of the other Hispanic. This is the wonderful thing about Hispanic culture. They're different than everybody else. There is a, a boisterous way about Puerto Rican people, and they're funny motherfuckers, but they'll kick the shit out of you. I'm here to tell you right now. Like, you know, like, Puerto Rican people are scary to me. You understand? Because when I grew up, we had two Puerto Rican kids on the block, and they were throwing rocks at us. I mean, hitting us with sticks, this type of thing. They'd fucking, I don't know. They'd, yeah, they'd jam the stick in your, in your front tire and you'd, go, you'd flip and land on your head. They were like, uh, and they were like unstoppable athletes. They'd chase you down. They were faster than like, I don't know, two locomotives tied together. And it was like, let me put it to you this way. If you needed to rob the ice cream truck, these were the kids you'd call. I mean, I'm, I, I'm just saying. I'm just saying they were like bad kids. So I always had this thing with Puerto Rican kids. I'm like, what, what are they going to do? Hit me with a, uh, a stick? Throw rocks at me? Who throws rocks at people? Remember, remember being that young where you thought you could throw rocks at things? Oh, my God. I went, in, I went into a black neighborhood once. And I'm, not, I'm just telling you what happened, all right? I'm not saying anything. I love black people, too, believe it or not. Dated a lot of black girls, all right? For a long time. 
So, I mean, this is it. What are we talking about? That, you gotta put those little caveats in before you say anything about somebody's fucking race. That's how, like, this, we live in two-year-old society. You didn't know? <laughs> I'm surrounded by retards. I don't know how to tell you. Anyhow, I remember driving my car in a black neighborhood because I, I, I was living with a girl. We were right on the edge of... of black and white. This is what people don't understand. You can literally cross one road and you're in a black neighborhood. That's how it happens here in Long Island. It's like white neighborhood, cross the road, black neighborhood. So we were right on the borderline. Could be like, be like, uh, ouch, I'm going to get shot. Oh, where's the barbecue? Uh, um, um, I'm kidding. Of course, I'm kidding. But I would drive through the black neighborhood and these little fucking kids would throw rocks at my car. Hey, and I'm like, I'm going to get out and say something. But I'm like, hey, take it easy. Not in this neighborhood. <laughs> you don't want to get out of your car. If they're throwing rocks at the car, forget about it. And I would yell out the window. I'd be like, what are you doing? And they didn't give a shit. They'd pick up another rock and throw it at your car. I'm like, who throws rocks at a car? Come on. It's like, when's the last time that happened? It's crazy. We used to throw rocks at the bus. What? Bing! <laughs> <laughs> Anyhow, Puerto Rican people are wild, all right? And one of my favorite people, guy I work with, he's the guy that when I had a Lincoln Town Car, you understand, I had a Lincoln Town Car sitting on 100-spoke fucking uh, knockoff wheels, white wall tires, thick white wall tires. I mean, I might as well have gotten out of the car with a Tommy gun and cigar hanging out of my mouth and a fedora on my head. And I remember he was out back cleaning up and I pull up in that car and I get out and he goes, like this face. That's a fucking car, papi. That's a fucking car. <laughs> he was so into it. Woo! Oh, God. And he calls me, you fucking German. You fucking Nazi. So, you know, it's like, great. We go back and forth. It's great. It's real love. Let me tell you something. When, that, that's what people don't understand about racism. When you insult somebody's race, you can do it in a very loving way. It's like you're identifying that person. You know? And you could do it in a very loving way. Like me and, 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 and my buddy there at work, we'll say racial things back and, and forth to each other. And it's hilarious. Because it's so taboo. You know, like, he'll call me Nazi. Did you know he, he'll say to other people. Like, he has no, like, like filter. He'll say, to, did, you, did you know he was a Nazi? <laughs> this motherfucker. He'll call me, they're going to call me the G word and the F word. The other F word. You know, that you can't say anymore because, you know, we live in a world of censorship. That's right. And it's hilarious. Because guess what? He doesn't mean it. <laughs> Dummies. <laughs> it's not intent. It's not meant to hurt. It's meant to joke. So you can do that. I think. But you couldn't really do that. The intent is not to hurt. The intent is really funny. And it's actually, it, it bonds us. You understand? It bonds us. Our, our racism bonds us. You didn't know. Uh, um, all right, listen. Uh, here we go. It's been had. It's been, Rico sends that 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 uh, statue of the mighty Bithead One Thousand. M M M. No, uh, sends us that statue that plays all the you know world famous Bithead One Thousand phrases. <laughs> no, and uh, that was incredible. And I mean, anytime anybody comes over the house, I pull it out. They're like, "Please, can I go home?" And I'm like, "Stay right there." You're not going anywhere until we're done with this. You understand? So what do you want? You want coffee? I'll get you some Danish. Sit tight, because we're going to play every single one of these recordings. And there's like a bunch of them on there. <laughs> and he sent this record. The, the Bithead Fever record. Rico. And I said to when I saw this thing, I said, this is a goof. I said, nobody presses a record. I said, there's a different record in there. And I'm saying in my head. And if you look at the goddamn record, okay, it's, look at this. 
It's on clear vinyl, no less. And look at that. So I'm like, this is ridiculous. This thing doesn't play. I said, if it does play, it's probably like some other, like 45, like you put it on and it's a uh, still of the night, <laughs> white snake, <laughs> which wouldn't be bad. But then, so I don't even put it on my record player. And all of a sudden I get an email from Rico. He goes, you know, uh, I wish you would check out the record because, and he goes into this big story about how it was, he had it produced by this guy. And there's a guy singing on it, and it's actually a song that he wrote about the show. And I'm like, what? So I told him, I said, listen, we're going to do a show on this next week. And here we are two months later, because that's how I operate. No, it just goes, when he did tell me about it, uh, here's my excuse list, okay? I was very sick, and it was very cold. So now we got a temperate day where I feel like I could come out here and, like, Put the needle on the record, put the needle on the record, put the needle on the record when the drum beat goes like this. What is this, the piano? Uh, what is this, the piano slam at the end of a day in the life? You hear that China crash? It won't give up. All right. Uh, runny nose, runny nose. Everybody knows about your runny nose, runny nose. Uh, um, um. All right, so that's it. And now uh, I lost track of where we were. And I said, oh, my God. I said, I had to come out here at the right time and do this in the, in the right style and fashion. And I hope we're doing that right now because this is Bithead Fever. I mean, uh, fucking record player time. Record player time. Let's get set up here. There's actually a video on them recording this on YouTube, and I'll put the link down below. This is like, this is ridiculous. You understand? go without further ado ladies and gentlemen brought to you by rico from puerto rico it's bit head fever i had to do some serious rigging here okay that's my ground wire so i don't know how this is going to work <laughs> we might have a little interference ay 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 of course, this son of a bitch is going to act up. Ah, oh, you cock smoker. Oh boy. Okay, like every day of my fucking life, we're experiencing massive technical difficulties, basically. Yes, yeah, so our record play is defunct. So what I'm doing is I'm pulling down the video on YouTube and we're Bluetoothing into the Samsung 1010. Look at this amazing technology right here. Anyway, guys, I present to you Bithead Fever. There's a bit of an intro. This is hilarious.
Cuba. What a production! Rico, oh my god! Amazing, absolutely amazing. Could you believe that I, I didn't even put this record on my record player? And here it is, right here, guys. <laughs> Rico, I don't know what to say. I don't know what to say, but you just, I mean, this is the Bithead uh, theme song. If we don't get a copyright strike, somehow, some way. Guys, you have Bithead Fever? You ought to, because you just tuned in to the greatest video game program in the history of human civilization. And you better believe that. With a 4K face! We'll see you next time. Ladies and gentlemen, not only do we have like a, a, a number one song going nationwide, 50,000 watts from the Empire State Building, we also do a Patreon show. It's called, I don't know, it, it's called The Drunk Gives Everybody Else Advice. Yes, The Drunk Guy from a Shed in, on Long Island. There you go. Gives you wonderful advices. That's right. Email me. You have problems. They're horrible problems. We get rid, we erase them with wonderful advices just like this. But one of these days, your daughter is going to be doing a funnel, completely drunk out of her mind, and then she's going to make out with somebody, and who knows, get a couple fingers in the snatch. If a cop came through my door and I'm watching The Road Warrior, if I'm the cop, I'm on lunch break. That's I sit down next to you. I say, hey, listen, you're under arrest, but, uh, you know. This is the part where where the guy throws the boomerang and slices the guy's fingers off and then huge mungus laughs. Catching downwind of this these like I don't know, a hundred nut sacks right now. A hundred nut sacks that are caked with shit. Don't they get infection? Filthy animals, literally! Guy, you get the fuck out of here. I gotta teach you how to raise kids. I know, you want to jump under a lawnmower. I don't blame you. I'm right with you on that one. But before you do that, email me. Send me your problems. I'm going to do everything I can to solve them. And we do. We solve people's problems. We've had success stories. People that come back write me telling me, oh my God, my life is different. Whether it's better or not, I don't know. But it's different. No. Guys. We solve your problems, just like, and that's it. You live in freedom and happiness. That's what everybody wants. Guys, Patreons, I want to tell you how grateful I am for each and every one of you for uh, allowing this show to, to move forward the way it does. Thank you, guys. We'll see you next time.